Suzuki community. It's a beautiful Saturday here in Arizona. And I have been really pushing this for years and years and years. Don't tow a Samurai with the rear drive shaft. So the video today is about towing. And I'm going to show you why you should not tow it with the rear drive shaft in. There are some nice products out there from one of my great competitors, Trail Tough. You can get a rear drive shaft disconnect. You can sit in your driver's seat and disconnect the rear drive shaft. I'm cheap. I'm a Suzuki guy. I'm going to unbolt my drive shaft if I'm flat towing. And I don't care if it's one mile or one foot. I am not going to tow it with that rear drive shaft in. If it breaks, it's going to be very expensive. So what I have on the lathe here is a main shaft of a Suzuki Samurai T case with a high and low gear on it. Notice that they spin because it's in neutral. The factory says put the T-case in neutral and the transmission in second. That's the factory manual now for towing a unmodified Samurai. Uh, if you got an unmodified Samurai, you're a small percentage of the Samurai owners of America because most of us are going to put on big tires and gears and armor and we're not going to have a stock Samurai. They're beautiful. I love them. I've had them. But um, most of my Samurais have been modified. So today we're going to talk about what happens when you have a rear drive shaft bolted to your T-case. So you'll see a picture of this later. And I'm also going to talk about phasing because if you remove the drive shaft, there's a, a real nice way to do that. So what I want you to know is that if the tires are rotating and if you have a rear drive shaft in, and you don't have full floating locking axles, which I think there's five people in America that do, what's happening is when it rotates, when this rotates, the tires, you're pulling it, it's going to be rotating the main shaft. There is no way to stop that unless you disconnect the rear tires from the T-case. So what I want to show you is that when it's in neutral, you've got a coupler that moves from the stick and it can go from one gear to another. Now in this situation the engine's up here, the rear tires are in the back. So if you're towing this and you have heavy braking what happens is that the coupler moves forward onto the high gear it won't lock onto it. It'll kick it back and it will lock onto the low gear. So all of a sudden your T-case thinks that your engine is going 14,000 RPM and what, because you're going 70 miles an hour and it jumps into low gear and the damage is very extensive. Uh, my little business here in this building, just this building, I've been here for about 11 years, we've charged about $300,000 for the Samurais that are being towed through Arizona on the highway over here a few miles away and they jumped into gear and they limp in here and we have seen T-cases gone. Uh, we've seen drive shafts gone. We've seen transmissions busted. The worst I've seen is we take the engine apart and the crank comes out in three pieces. Sorry, I don't have pictures of that. You just have to take my word for it. I um, don't have a reputation of lying to the community. And so today I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna turn this on. It's gonna get a little noisy. But what I want to show to you is what's happening when it's rotating. And keep in mind, I'm I'm only going to show you like if it's being towed at five miles an hour. And I'd also like to stress this while it's quiet, is that the reason why Suzuki wrote for the towing to put the transmission in second is because they never thought we would be using 700 horsepower diesels to pull the little Samurai because if the transmission is in second and it jumps into gear, you're supposed to feel it drag the car. So I was towing a Suzuki once for a friend because... I was going to surprise him with the car I just finished. And so he tows this all over America, never takes the rear drive shaft off. He tows it per factory, so I put it in the factory setting. And I got on, uh, oh, about 10, 15 miles away from here, and I got on a bumpy bridge. Soon as my big diesel pulled that thing over on the other side of the bridge, it, it was bumpy again, and then it started dragging my diesel. So I knew that it was already too late. Pulled off to the side, sure enough, T-case had jumped into gear. And when I got there, the transmission was wiped out, so I had to bring it back. And $3,500 later of my money, 
uh, I fixed my friend's car. So that was my own personal lesson. But I've run into hundreds of people, and I've been on the phone with people that ask me, well, how do you tell people how to tow? And I would say, take the rear drive shaft out. I see it online every day. All the new people come into the community. You got the guys that say, well, two camps. Oh, I towed all over America, never had a problem, and I towed and it broke. So there's two camps, and I'm in the camp of don't tow it with the drive shaft because don't break it. You broke it because you didn't listen to what all these people are saying, don't tow it with the rear drive shaft. So when I turn this on, I'm going to hold the two gears. That's what I'm going to do, and show you as you're towing it, why the factory manual says that you have to stop at 200 miles, you have to disconnect the Samurai, you have to drive it around to cool it off. Because it's spinning inside. It's spinning fast. I'm not going to do that fast spin to show you because it's dangerous. Well, maybe I will. To give you an idea of what it's like towing at 70 miles an hour. Uh, maybe I won't. It might fly off of here. But anyways, we're going to turn it on right now, and I'm going to hold these two gears showing you what neutral is. And if anybody could explain to me what true neutral means, because a lot of people think true neutral means that I can tow the car in true neutral. If you would ask the company that promotes true neutral what happens if it jumps into gear with your product, uh, you'll be surprised to find out that they want you to buy a rear guy shaft disconnect and they will tell you it's not for towing and they can't guarantee that it won't jump into gear. So keep that in mind. So if you have a true neutral setup, uh, please remove the rear drive shaft so that you don't have to call that company and cry to them about all the damage because they're not going to help you. All right, here we go. We're going to turn this on and we're going to hold the gears and you're going to see what I mean that everything's spinning. Here we go. As you can see here, the main shaft is spinning. Only it's spinning much faster than this when you're going down the highway. The coupler is rotating in the middle. It's going with it because it's locked onto the gear. Now, what happens in a heavy braking situation is the weight of the oil, because the oil's in there, the weight of the oil will move that coupler and the coupler will not engage the high gear. It will just kiss it and then force it back on the low gear. So imagine being in low gear going down the highway. You understand now that the shock is just tremendous. And so what I have it locked into the high gear now, I cannot stop this gear. It's locked in. The coupler's on the teeth. But this one is still free, so you can see it's not rotating. If that happens to you when you're towing and you've got the rear drive shaft in, all right, let's get an idea of what it would be like towing at, say, 40 miles an hour. It won't stop spinning. I'm going to take this apart for a second, and we're going to talk about phasing. So you just give me just a second here. And we're going to move over here. Grab this. Suzuki is so cool. <clears throat> they give you dots to phase. So let's talk about the dots first. This is the female, and the female is going to be on the T-case. Why? Because we don't want the female to get water. So we don't put it on the differential, which is lower. We put it on the T case. So if any water does get in here, it drains out. So if you got your drive shaft backwards, let's get it right. Now, the reason why the dot is on here, hopefully you focus on that pink dot. We'll show you a still picture. There's a male pink dot. There's a female pink dot. There's supposed to be a rubber boot here. If you don't have it, we have brand new ones. You can get them from us. Just give us a call. But if you line up the dots, spline to spline, you get something called phasing. Now phasing, this is not phased. This is not phased. I missed the spline. As you can see, this U-joint here is flat and this one's crooked. So I missed the dots. 
So I'm going to go back and get the dots lined up. There we go. Okay, this is phased. Phased means that your U-joints are in line with each other. And what I mean by that is if you have a clock, 12, 6, 3, 9, it's so easy. Both of your U-joints have to be across. You can't have a cross and you can't have an X. They must both be crosses. Why? Because when a drive shaft is turning, if you don't have this phase correctly, it will fight in the turn. It won't turn smoothly. It will bind. And you will feel that as a vibration in the car. So phasing is super important. How do I protect your car from <laughs> flat towing? And it's not me, it's you. You've got to take it off. I'm not coming out there to take it off. What you do, this is on the T case, this is on the differential. You unbolt the flange on the differential, you pull this off, put it in a bag with your tools. Never use open end wrenches, always use closed wrenches to get these bolts off and put them on tight. But basically, you can leave this on the T case, take this off, you can never damage your T case from towing. So when you do this, Put your T-case in two-wheel drive. We want to disconnect it from the front drive shaft. We want to have free on our hubs, our locking hubs, on the front tires. And when you first take off, have someone put eyeballs on that front drive shaft. That front drive shaft should not spin. If it does, your free lock on one of your tires is not disengaged and if the axle is turning the drive shaft. This will not damage the car, but it will wear stuff out because again, the tire rotating is going to be mechanically rotating everything else. So that's how you tow safely, that's how you phase drive shafts. Fronts are the same. The intermediate shaft doesn't have a slip male-female, and so you don't have to phase the intermediate shaft. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe. Don't forget to comment on the free product we're giving away. Please, I want to give that stuff away. So make a comment on there. And uh, I want to apologize for not doing videos. I've been really busy, overwhelmed. And I'm going to show you another video here. Some cool stuff we're working on, which is taking all my time. Thank you very much. Love you guys. Really appreciate you uh, subscribing. Thank you.